Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about subatomic particles. Remember back to when you may have learned about the periodic table of the elements? An element is something that has a characteristic atomic structure and predictable chemical behavior. For example, the element gold is shiny and yellow and metal. Examples of other elements are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. An atom is the smallest amount of an element that you can have. If you try to divide the atom into smaller particles, you change the characteristics of that element. Everything is made up of atoms. In a living organism, atoms bond together to make up molecules, such as proteins or carbohydrates. Many different types of molecules come together to make up a cell, which is the smallest unit of life. A group of cells that work together to perform a function make up a tissue. And if you have two or more types of tissues working together to perform a function, you have an organ, and so on. But what makes up an atom? Atoms are composed of several different types of subatomic particles. These particles have rules they must follow. Protons are positively charged particles that exists in an area in the middle of the atom called the nucleus. This could be the little blue circles you see. Neutrons also exist in the nucleus, and they have no charge. These would be the little red circles that you see. And electrons orbit the nucleus in predictable orbits called electron shells. This is an atom of carbon. Because it is hard to draw an atom like this, we usually draw them in a flatter manner, like so. How do we know how many protons and neutrons to add when we draw an element? We can use the atomic number to guide us. Elements are listed in the periodic table by their atomic number. So at the very top is hydrogen, which is atomic number one. This is followed by helium, with atomic number two, and so on. The atomic number tells you the number of protons an atom has. You can't change the number of protons without changing the element. You are looking at a drawing of carbon. Carbon is atomic number six. So since the atomic number is six, we know that we have six protons, which belong in the nucleus. Remember, Protons are positively charged, and if this atom is electrically neutral, it needs to have the same number of negative charges. In a neutral atom, you have equal numbers of protons and electrons. We already know that we have six protons, so we must have six electrons also. How do we arrange them? Electrons are arranged around the nucleus in shells. The first shell can hold two electrons and we will fill that one in first. See how the line has two dots on it. This is the first shell and the first two electrons. The second shell can hold up to eight electrons. We only had six electrons total in carbon though, and we put two into the first shell. This leaves four more to go into the second shell. There are more shells but we won't be covering them in this course. We don't have enough electrons to go further than this in carbon. Whichever shell is the outer shell is called the valence shell. In the case of carbon, the second shell is the valence shell. The octet rule states that the valence shell likes to be full. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Helium is atomic number two which means that it has two protons. We now know that if helium is neutral, there will also have to be two electrons. The first electron shell can hold two electrons, and so the drawing for helium would look like this. You can see that the valence shell is full with two electrons, and there are no leftover electrons, so helium is very happy. It has fulfilled the octet rule. A slightly bigger atom is neon. It is atomic number 10. How many protons would it have? Atomic number 10 means that it has 10 protons. And how many electrons? 
to be neutral, it has to have the same number of electrons as it has protons. That would be 10. We would draw neon like this. The first two electrons would go into the first shell. We still have eight left over, so they would go into the second shell. Neon is happy and fulfilled because its valence electron shell is full. It has satisfied the octet rule. Both of the elements are very stable and they don't react with other elements because they have already satisfied their octet rule. They don't need anyone else to do it. We haven't talked much about the neutrons. Remember, neutrons are the particles that have no charge and hang out in the nucleus with the protons. Although they have no charge, they can add to the weight of an atom. The atomic mass of an atom is calculated by adding together the number of protons and the number of neutrons. In this atom of carbon, the number of protons is six and the number of neutrons is also six, so the atomic mass would be 12. Elements cannot change the number of protons, but it can gain or lose neutrons. If an atom gains a neutron, it will get heavier. Its atomic mass will increase. Because neutrons are not charged, the atom will still be neutral. Atoms that differ only in their atomic mass are called isotopes. Atoms that gain or lose an electron become charged, and these charged atoms are called ions. Because electrons are negatively charged, gaining an electron makes the atom more negatively charged. Losing an electron makes the atom more positively charged. Once you get the information about subatomic particles down, you are ready for the next video called Bonds, Covalent and Ionic. See you there.